Hi everyone, and thanks Cynthia for your module on working with large-scale sites. I'm Pippa, and today I'm filming these videos in the land of the Wed people, near the Garbam or Moore River in Western Australia. I hold a master's degree in sustainability and climate change adaptation, and in addition to completing two PDCs, I've studied permaculture teaching with Rosemary Morrow, an experience which led me to explore permaculture responses to disasters for my master's research. I'm lucky enough to have never been negatively affected by a natural disaster, but as a child we evacuated our rural home in the Adelaide Hills because of the 1983 Ash Wednesday bushfires. Across Australia, 75 people died, over 2,500 houses were destroyed, and hundreds of thousands of native animals and livestock died. The insurance payments alone were billions of dollars in today's money. Now, maybe it's one of those constructed memories, but as we drove back a day later, I remember seeing blackened tree stumps across the hillside, some with pocket fires still smouldering. Now this image has stayed with me as I travelled the same route to and fro in the school bus. When would a fire like that happen again and how would we be able to respond? Prior to European colonisation, Indigenous Australians like the Wed actively managed the land and used fire as one of their farming tools. Fast forward the 230 years since European colonisation and radically different land management approaches means that large tracts of bushland with built up fuel loads are in close proximity to settlements in urban areas. Wherever you live, it is important that you can learn from old stories and traditional land management in order to understand potential risks and develop strategies to respond. Indigenous Australian Dreamtime stories, those of the Maori and traditional Hmong folk tales from Aceh province continue to help people to survive events such as tsunami, but also provide researchers with better understandings of the impacts of previous disaster events. Now, the contemporary situation means that while we need to acknowledge and work with natural wisdom and history to better understand the land and reduce risk, we also need to draw on disciplines such as engineering in order to develop the resilient, functional human-made systems. Now, wherever you live, permaculture supports us in connecting these approaches and gives us the ethics, principles, attitudes and tools that will help us to understand risk to design safer spaces and systems. Now in this module, we'll be learning about designing for resilience in the face of potential chaos and catastrophe. In these videos, we'll learn about the different types of hazards and the factors of exposure and vulnerability that cause disasters. And you'll develop disaster risk profiles for the two most likely threats to the property you're designing for, whether it is your own or that of a client. We'll learn about the different types of hazard in detail and identify appropriate design responses. I'll be discussing common permaculture landscape responses, but following Roy Morrow's lead, we'll draw on disaster risk reduction, a uh, humanitarian approach to working with communities.